right, so tonight's, uh, or today's topic is on when the seven deadly sins on wrath. Wrath has to do with hatred, anger. It's one of the really intense, powerful, potent emotions that affects our, our bodies, it affects our well-being, it affects our minds. People get obsessed with wanting revenge. You know, um, have you ever in your life had something happen where maybe somebody did something to you or someone stole from you or someone took advantage of you and you could feel your whole body wanting revenge? Anybody ever feel that way? And did you notice how no matter what you did, you couldn't stop the feeling? It's almost like it kind of takes over and you become obsessed with wanting the revenge or wanting to take action or wanting to cause harm or wanting to hurt somebody, okay? And, and uh, it literally affects your whole, your whole physical body, it, it affects your stress levels, and it, it's always like a constant state of adrenaline moving through your body, and it's like the, the mind loop, it can't let it go, okay? So it just, it just can't let go. And it affects your health as well, which people don't realize. So when you're in a state of that kind of really intense feelings, your whole body, your whole being is being affected, okay? So wanting revenge, when you're doing that, like if, like most people aren't gonna go out and take revenge. You might, it might just keep running through your body and you might continue to have really intense feelings and most likely you're not gonna go do something, okay? But there are those who do and uh, one of the reasons why we call it a mortal sin is because you're doing it with consciousness, you know that it's wrong, and you consent to it. So you're aware, you consent, and you understand that your actions and what you're doing is wrong. And yet you do it anyway. So you're, you're literally, you know what I mean? We still, in our world, we still have religions and we still have beliefs. So we don't have pure pure awareness within ourselves where we understand things differently. So because of that, we too are, um, in a way, we are dictated by those beliefs that become collective. So even though we may have a, a broader awareness, we still have anchored in us all the belief systems and the programming that has been passed down through thousands of years. Okay? So even though you're waking up, there's still stuff inside of you that's still going to know and understand that having intense feelings where you want revenge or you feel hatred or you want to cause harm and you do it with understanding and, and awareness and knowledge and therefore it's like then you've really committed something wrong okay in your psyche in your well in your in your whole self within your own body within your own mind you are doing something wrong and you know it okay and this is another reason why people when they leave the body so those of us that do a lot of clearing work and we deal with discarnate beings, people that have died, they're inside of other people's bodies. And a lot of people, the reason they're in somebody else's body is because they are so afraid that they're gonna be judged when they go home. You know, cause we, here, let me just back up. We have these belief systems, that there's a heaven, that there's a hell, that there's a purgatory, there's an in-between, there's a dead zone. You know, there's all these frequencies and they exist because we have created them. So when we leave, a lot of people that I'm dealing with, especially removing discarnate beings out of people's bodies, they don't go into the light because they are afraid they're going to be judged. They're going to, you know, they're going to be um, persecuted in some way. They've done something wrong. They can't be forgiven. Now, sometimes it's things like I've actually had people afraid to go into the light because they felt like what they did, like stealing, was such a bad thing that they're afraid to go into the light, okay? Then I have other people that have done major atrocities, like serious bad stuff. And these people are afraid to go because they know, this is one, this, this is like a mortal sin. They know in their whole being that they have done wrong, that they have caused harm or, or have done something and they, they know it's wrong. So there's that fear that if they go into the light, then they're gonna be judged for what they've done because it's a knowing. Now it's different than feeling bad or feeling guilty because you've caused harm unknowingly or innocently. I mean, truly there are no accidents. And if we just uh, take it from this perspective, you know, most people aren't out to cause harm to try and hurt somebody. And sometimes we do that 
and yet we feel guilty, but that's not a mortal sin. The mortal sin comes about because we know. We know wrong, bad, evil, and yet we do it anyway. So hatred and anger, wanting revenge, all of these are, when you look at the frequency of these emotions, they are really, really dark. They're black, okay? And when we also track it back, because again, nothing in your life right now is coming from this lifetime, even though it may feel like it. So you may have grown up with situations where, you know, situ where your parents maybe abused you or shamed you or humiliated you or frightened you or whatever they've done. They are the way they are because of what they've brought in from other, other experiences. But you've called that in. Okay, remember, you're calling that in. You, you're unraveling the past. You're trying to unravel trauma and shock and all kinds of different frequencies out of your, out of your physical body. And the way we do that is we have to reenact things. We have to elicit the feelings again. How are you going to do that? By recreating similar or same situations that cause one to feel the same way. Okay? So we're just trying to unravel things. And oftentimes, like when we look at people um, that are seriously disconnected, that have no feelings around causing harm, it, it, and, and no feelings or, or feelings of judgment or feelings of guilt or shame that have literally caused harm. It's interesting because when these beings leave the physical body, that's when they all of a sudden realize, oh, punishment day, today's the day, it's gonna, I'm going you know, to be judged for this. And this is why a lot of these entities don't want to go into the light. So by helping them to go, I have to show them that they're not going to be judged, that they're not going to be punished, there's not going to be retribution, because this is all like belief systems that we've created and co-created in our mind, and none of it's real. But basically, going back to the, that feeling of running revenge, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, how sometimes things happen to us and we become obsessed with feelings and thoughts, and yet we're not going to act out on them, and yet we're still going through that mind where the mind just keeps going, 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 and it could go on for days and go on for weeks and go on for months, sometimes even years. People can still hold wanting revenge. So sometimes too, when you hold that kind of frequency and wanting to cause harm to somebody that long, even though you haven't actually done something to do that, you know, you're creating something inside of your own self that puts you in a state of wrongdoing. Okay? So what we're looking for in our clearing tonight is we want to release some of those feelings of wanting revenge or wanting to get back or wanting to get even, and then also the feelings of hatred and also feelings that have to do with like despising, you know, we despise somebody and, or, or we, uh, like even the revenge feelings. So there's really intense feelings. And if you think about like in your life right now, if you think about different times where maybe something happened to you and where you really were holding on to that feeling and it, you know, like it just kept turning, turning. So that's what we're going to be lighting up this evening. So we want you to, you know, be aware of that. So you'll start thinking about different, different times or maybe there's something in your life. I remember one time, like way back, this is, this is back in the 60s, <laughs> I'm remembering a guy, I gave somebody some money because they needed for, to, for their vehicle and they never paid me back. And I remember being really upset about that. You know, he needs to pay me back. I want my money back. And I went on, you know, I could feel like this, this feeling inside, like I was really upset. I mean, I didn't want to um, cause harm, but there was still that really intense feeling that I couldn't let go. And it took, took a while. So. There's, I'm sure there's lots of different situations where you can think about or remember where you're feeling some kind of feeling of wanting to get back at somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's like even simple things, someone cuts you off and you get really upset in driving and it doesn't let go. You keep holding on. Okay, so that feeling of holding on is what we want to start releasing out of your energy field as well. And <clears throat> It's also connected to like um, past experiences. So as I'm looking into everyone's energy field right now, I can look, I'm looking back into some of your past lives 
and I can literally see that there's still like live energy, there's still frequencies that are interfering with you right now from past experiences where atrocities were done to you, things were done to you, attacks upon you, different, um, different feelings that, were, that came up, but also different intense experiences where I'm seeing some stuff too, or feeling out of control, like feeling like things are being done to you and there's nothing you could do about it. Okay, so that feeling of wanting to cause harm back or wanting to get back at, it's like, the, it's, like it's a pretty potent, strong frequency inside of people's bodies, okay? And so you've carried that with you. So that, that feeling of, of anger or the wrathful, wrathful feelings are still very much alive in your physical body. And what would life be like if you didn't have those kind of reactions? If things, you know, something happened to you and you didn't react or respond in that hateful, wrathful way where you just want to really friggin' murder somebody or take them down or get revenge, okay? So what if that wasn't there anymore? Can you imagine how much more peaceful your body would be? Also, <laughs> yeah, also, not only that, it's, um, but the good, what's cool though is when you're clear, you're also not drawing things to you. Remember that you're like a magnet, okay? Your body, whatever the wounding is, all those frequencies are in your energy field somewhere. So all these past incarnations that you've had where you became, you know, wrathful or having hatred or wanting revenge, those came about because of situations that happened to you and you're still carrying them with you and when those are gone, then you're not going to need to recreate more situations where you're going to try and make that feeling come up. So if you really get this piece around all the things that you've experienced, like if you really understand that when you have that reaction and the person that co-created that reaction with you could have been somebody from some other place, some other time in your life, and you've already agreed to have this dance. And but what you really want is to unravel. It isn't about more evidence, more evidence, Okay, can't trust anybody, people are messed up, people are wicked, people are cruel, evil, hateful, harmful. So if we hold that, then that's what we're going to experience. So if you have inside of your body anything where those feelings get really strong and intense of wanting to cause harm or wanting to hurt, wanting to um, get revenge on somebody, that's a very good barometer that there's still frequencies inside of you that need and want to be released, okay? And it also helps with the intensity of your life. Like if you're always getting in trouble or some bad stuff's always happening, you know, it's like, you, and you feel like you're a victim to life and to situations. And the truth is, is there really are no victims and yet it feels like it. So if we clean up even the victim pieces around all that, because when you've had really big atrocities happen to you, to the point where you really become hateful and want to cause harm and just want to be, you know, rebel, then th those energies are still stuck inside of you and they're dictating your life right now. Or, you know, you're dr and so just imagine like the magnet thing, if you've got, if you've got um, energy inside of you that has been hurt in a way that it, to the point to where you really want to ca cause harm back, where you want to get back at somebody, then that trauma still lives inside of you. And that becomes the magnet that literally draws to you the different people that are going to act out and help bring that feeling up inside of you. I mean, it's kind of trippy, I mean, to watch like even just a simple one like driving your car and someone cuts you off and you get all upset. I mean, you can really literally watch the frequency of things unfolding. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, a, it's like a play that's unfolding and you're just watching that play unravel. And it's all, we're all like actors in the play, co-creating together. And we all have our parts to play and we're all going to play them until we don't. So what we want is we want to stop playing those parts. And 
That means the willingness to dig deep and really look at what are you holding inside your body? What's still inside of you? And then to remember, and I know I cover this every time, but it's really important. You, everyone has other frequencies inside of them that are not them. Everyone, okay? There's probably only just a handful of people on the entire planet that don't. But all of humanity has many, several, sometimes hundreds, sometimes over a thousand, sometimes thousands of other energies, thought forms, frequencies, discarnate beings, and then also all the other energies that are not like human, um, that are also contributing to your experience. And if those are still in you, you're going to be affected by them. You're affected by their thoughts. So wouldn't it be a trip if those feelings of wanting revenge and wanting to kill somebody or wanting to cause harm or, you know, hurt somebody really bad and those feelings that are inside of you, what if that wasn't even you and once that energy was gone, it was over? You'd really get it that that wasn't you, okay? And if you've had atrocities done to you in past incarnations, then you are going to have that frequency in your body. It's still going to be there. Also, if you've done things to others and then other people want revenge on you, that too is going to impact you. It's going to affect you. You're going to feel that. That, that can also, um, it can have a quality of feeling afraid in the world or feeling victimized in the world or feeling like the world's not safe or the feeling like you can't trust people. You know what I mean? Anybody feel like you can't trust? Like, you, you know what I mean? It's like, some of you, some people literally can't even hardly function in the world because it's, it feels like too frightening, too uncomfortable, too scary to be in the world. So when we've done things in the past to others, we, are, we still carry all of that with us. So everyone's been the, you know, the, the perpetrator, everyone's been the victim, the victimizer. We've played all the roles. And what's awesome now is with the frequencies changing, and coming into the, 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 the shifting of the new paradigm, it's like all this old stuff can just wash away and be cleaned out more easily. I mean, there was a time when it was like, trying to unravel this stuff would take a lot of time. Now it's like, even, you know, I'm telling you, even in the last, I would say in this last year, even in the last months, energy can move so much faster. It's such a trip, like boom, 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 boom. And mass quantities, mass, mass, mass quantities. So that's the good news. So for everyone here, what we want to do is really just start, let's get in there, let's dig really deep. And what that means is you need to be willing to really look deep inside. Good news is you don't have to talk about it. You don't have to tell me anything. All I want you to do is really expose to yourself and in your own physical body feelings, okay? And what I mean by that is, if you can remember or think about a time when you just really wanted to get back at somebody, okay? Pick one, maybe you have more than one, doesn't matter. You can have a bunch, doesn't matter. It's the feeling I'm after. It's not the amount of times, it's the feeling, okay? So I'm looking for the feeling, the emotion that's there. How does it make you feel? So that feeling of wanting revenge or wanting to get back at somebody or wanting to torture somebody or wanting to cause harm to somebody, that feeling creates a, a grab in the belly, it creates an energy charge through, the, through your physical body. But what happens is you kind of get caught in the thought of it, the loop of it. Okay, so sometimes it's hard to go underneath the feeling, but that's what I wanna, want you to do, is I want you to go underneath the feeling, the initial feeling. Okay, so by going underneath the initial feeling, then we start accessing the subconscious. We start going into what's really going on here. And another thing too, <clears throat> some people don't want to look at or believe or even think about or acknowledge that they've actually caused harm to others. Okay, that's, you know, sometimes it's like the denial. I like the denial thing. Um, you know what I mean? It's like you can actually, you can feel it. Here's another thing that's kind of cool. You can't really fool yourself in some way because you, you, you can, but you can't. Like if you're really honest with yourself, you can't fool yourself, okay? But if you want to fool yourself, you can deny. And you know what I mean? Like, oh no, I would never do that. But what you're doing is you're, you're literally pushing away thoughts, feelings, sensations, and not being willing to look at them. 
when you do that, the energy turns to a different frequency and it, and it turns, has a color that I call denial. So that frequency presents. And when we tell ourselves the truth, like if we can really be honest with ourselves, you know, the good news is you don't have to tell anybody else, but if you're honest with yourself, this is where clearings go really deep. Okay? So what that means is the willingness, okay? The willingness, the willingness to know, the willingness to expose, the willingness to just dig deep and find out what am I holding on to? What, what's the feeling inside? So I'm just going to be asking you all to just be as willing as you can. Like I said, you don't have, no, you don't have to talk about anything. It's not about exposing anything, but it's about exposing to yourself. Well, that reminds me too. Here's another thing too, you guys. Facing ourselves is one of the scariest things you'll do. I'm not, I'm not joking, I'm telling you straight up. It is the scariest thing you'll do, okay? I mean, it's one thing to have people looking at you and, and you, know, you, you know, you're presenting in a certain way and you can put up your facades and you can put up your barriers and your blocks, you can protect your heart center. And yet, when you really start digging in and being honest with yourself, it gets really uncomfortable. I remember when I used to have the Renaissance Center doing the big programs and I, we, had, we, had, we had mirrors on the walls and we'd have people stand in front of the mirror and look right at themselves. People would get really, really uncomfortable. You might want to try it at home. Just, I mean, I'm sure you all have done this, but it, when you look in the mirror and you're just being present with yourself and pretty soon you start to feel this anxiety starts to happen, a little, <laughs> little discomfort starts to happen, but if you keep staying with it, so most, you know, it's like that's the, that's the opportunity. And, and that way you can keep revealing and you keep talking, talking and sharing and go deeper, deeper, deeper. You can have some profound shifts and changes with that kind of exercise. And then also, too, looking in each other's eyes. You know, that's another thing I used to do. You sit in front of somebody and you look right into their eyes. And then what we also do is you start talking about whatever presents, whatever's starting to come up. You know, it's like exposing, exposing, exposing. So, you know, even the thought of exposing can be terrifying for people. But what's happening is you don't know what's inside of you. All your past incarnations, all the atrocities that you've done, all the hurtful, harmful things that you have done are buried in the subconscious. You've carried them forward in your soul imprint. And partly what happens, you know, some people get paralyzed. They don't want to stand up in front of groups and they go blank, blah, blah, blah. Partly because the moment you stand up in front of people, your subconscious is believing or thinking everybody knows everything about you. They can see everything that you've ever done and you don't even know what that is. It's, it's not true unless, of course, they're all psychic and can really read, read you. But basically, they're still not going to get all the really deep stuff, okay? But that's what's happening. You're literally feeling exposed and you don't know it. But it's not even about this lifetime. It's all the past stuff that you're, that you're feeling they're seeing and you don't know, even know what that is. So, like I said, one of the scariest things you'll do is face your own self, look at yourself, and be willing to keep going deeper, 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 digging in. Okay, so for tonight, what we want to do is, again, we're going to go into the feeling aspect of this. And... We go into that by remembering. So one way to trigger feelings is to bring back a memory. Once, you're, once you bring back the memory and you can feel the energy inside and you can feel the feelings inside, you don't need the memory anymore, okay? Because it's really not about the memory, it's about what is stuck in your body. But the memory of something brings the feeling up, it elicits the feeling inside. And once you start feeling those feelings, now this is a little, this one's like I said, it's like we get stuck in the revenge aspect of it or feeling like we've been wronged in some way and we want to get back. Okay, so you, you could feel yourself being stuck a little bit in just that facet of it. So um, we're going to see if we can work with that a little bit so we go, start to go underneath that feeling of what's really under the, the, the first feeling, initial feeling that you're going to feel. Okay? All right, and then also remember, too, that we can call in other people. You can call in your friends, your parents, your siblings, your children. doesn't matter. Whoever you want, you can call them in. Bring them into the experience as well. 
And then two, remember to call my presence in, to stand right beside you. Okay, that helps me to really tune into each of you as though I'm just with you, even though it's collective and working in a group, but that also helps to make things, you know, it's like I can literally see each one of you. So remember to do that, call me in so you really feel my presence, okay?